up everyone and welcome back to another video and in this one I'm going to be running you through this painting of this full litter of border collie puppies right from beginning to the end. As you can see all the puppies are drawn out first on separate just cheap paper. I had to tape a few pieces together because it's quite a long painting. I just go over the outlines in marker so that I can basically just turn the paper over and then I can just go over the outlines with some charcoal. Meanwhile I, I am just preparing the background on the final piece of paper for the puppies to go on. Just a plain blue one this time. I started off with normal brushwork and then just used the airbrush on top to get that nice smooth effect. Once that's all done and dried I just attach the paper to the final painting that's got all the puppy outlines on it with the side against the painting obviously that's got the charcoal and then I just go over each outline quite heavily pressing on so it, that the charcoal underneath transfers onto the actual painting and that's how I transfer my outlines onto the painting basically. So now that I'm onto the painting instead of just doing one puppy at a time like I often do with portraits that have got multiple subjects I decided to add an underlayer to every single puppy first and get all that done before moving back to the puppy on the left and starting from there and moving across again to add the extra layers and the detail. All these puppies were photographed separately they weren't all sitting in a row in the same photograph so I basically had to do a composite prior to this on uh, in Photoshop basically just placing them all next to each other and trying to get them to fit nicely in a you know in an aesthetically pleasing way and trying to make sure no puppies were looking out at painting or all like that so any that were looking one way I'd put them at the edge of painting so they were looking into painting so basically all that were planned before I drew the puppies out ready for putting them on the actual painting So now I'm back to the first puppy and um, first thing I need to do is just tidy it up a little bit because that first layer that I applied it's a little bit messy so everything just needs tidying up a little bit getting ready for that final detailed layer. This puppy and one of the others does have a blue eye as well as a brown eye so if you're wondering why one eye is not being covered over then that's why. As per usual all supplies that I'm using I'm going to list in description. It's just the paper that I've not got a link to because they don't do it on Amazon the one that I use but I will still list it underneath the links to the other supplies. I mean to be fair you don't really need to have to be working on the exact same surface as me to be able to use the techniques that I'm using anyway. Not that I'm specifically showing techniques in this video although I probably will do another video involving some techniques from this video and I'll definitely be uploading it to Patreon 
which I'm currently adding more content to ready for launch at some point. Speaking of Patreon, I'm currently uploading content to that as I've already stated and I'm going to be having three tiers I think. Um, one's going to be for specifically acrylic, one's going to be for specifically charcoal and then there's going to be another one for both of them for them people that's interested in seeing everything that I'm putting on there. I'll be uploading all the stuff that I've already posted on here, well pretty much all that stuff, in real time. Obviously it won't be narrated because I didn't narrate it at the time and it's just too long, there's just too many hours of it, So, but you can still watch it all in real time and see what I'm doing. And then I'll be creating new content that I will know that because I'm posting it to Patreon, I will narrate it as I'm actually working on it. So if you're interested in any of that then keep an eye out because I'm hoping to get that launched soon. I've already got a few acrylic ones up and I've uploaded a charcoal one today and I'll be getting on with some more charcoal ones as well. They're easy to put together, I can just film my drawings as I'm doing them and talk through it whilst I'm doing it and then I can just upload it to YouTube and then put it onto Patreon. I do get some comments from people on my YouTube who are complaining that the time lapses are not really much used to them. There's some people that have been a little bit rude and I've said that there's just no reason to be rude at all. It's one thing making suggestions and then it's another thing just being nasty. It's like if, if you don't say it to my face like that then just don't say it from safety behind a screen like that because it's a bit spineless if you ask me. And I did pin one of these nasty comments and then it started creating some discussion. <laughs> so some other people start commenting on it and I commented on it. And then I just thanked them for creating some discussion on my video and then they quickly just deleted it because, well, <laughs> they didn't want to help me any. <laughs> they just wanted to be nasty. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's one way of dealing with the nasty comments. But really, there's just no need for them at all. You don't need to be like that. Making suggestions is something that you can do without being rude. And you've got to remember that this is all basically what I've done for free. You've not paid for any of it, so you're not really entitled to anything. I mean, if you're paying and I weren't delivering, then I could understand, but you've not paid for any of this, so you can't demand or feel entitled to anything. I make very little from this YouTube channel. So most of my time and effort has to go into what actually pays me bills and what have you. So I don't have that much time to set aside to doing tutorials and what have you for this. I do try but I just ain't got enough time to do more. And that's why I've decided to start a Patreon because then maybe I can make some content for that which is more detailed and obviously I will be getting you know, paid more comeback from it. And it'll hopefully be more worth my time doing it so then people that are more serious can always just sign up to that. I mean I will still put things on here, tutorials and what have you, but obviously you're going to get more if you go on to there. But please just try and appreciate that I've got to concentrate on you know what pays me bills and what you know pays for me living. And the people that complain the most are the ones that are the least likely to want to contribute anything to cause themselves. They just expect to take, take, take. It's them kind of people that are most likely to whinge and whine at you because you're not giving them exactly what they think they're entitled to. So anyway, all that said, I'm back to painting in this video. You can see that I've reached the fourth puppy along. I think the puppy before it, the mainly white one, probably took longer than any of the other pups because white fur just takes longer than black fur. Black is really quick to do in comparison. So the more black the puppy had on it and the less white, the quicker it were to do. I'd still actually not decided even at this point what the puppies were actually going to be sitting on. I think as I started getting a little bit further along I did speak to a client and we decided that they would be sitting on grass so you will see me doing that towards end of video as well.
So now I've moved on to the first of the tricoloured puppies. Most of the puppies in this litter are just black and white, but there are two tricoloured ones, so there's some tan points to paint on this one. And the one next to it, which will be next, is also a tricoloured puppy. This particular puppy had ears that stick out quite a lot, so it needed a bit of extra room so that uh, the ears weren't colliding with the other puppies, so to speak. Most of the other puppies had ears that were a little bit closer and tighter to the heads, so it weren't so much a problem. If there's any parts of this painting that you want to see as a tutorial, then be sure to let me know in comments. It's always useful to know what people actually do want to see as a tutorial. It's one thing making a guess but you don't necessarily know what people in your audience are actually looking for so it's always helpful especially if a lot of people are making the same kind of request because then you know that if you post that tutorial that they've asked for then it's going to do quite well because there were a lot of people that were asking for it. So now we're on to the second tricoloured puppy and I think it's lucky really that it's border collie litter because they do tend to be quite variable in their appearance. They've all got different markings and obviously you get different colours. A couple of pups in this litter have got a blue eye and then you've got a couple of tricoloureds among the black and whites. So there's a little bit more variety compared to say if you did a, a litter of black labradors for example and you can see the last puppy on end because it were looking over to the left I put it on the right side of painting so that it were looking into the painting and not out of painting it were a little bit of a marathon getting through all these puppies so it were a relief to get onto that last pup finally and make them look like they were all sitting there all obedient in a little line <laughs> because having had litters of pups before in past border collie puppies I can tell you now it would have been extremely difficult to get actual puppies to do that which is why the puppies were all photographed separately and then put together and people do ask me that a lot when I'm doing portraits they ask me if it's alright if the dogs are not together in the same photo and if you're just doing bust portraits, it don't really matter. You can put them together from different photographs. But if they are in a composition where they're going to be like as if they're together in a scene, then you've got to be a little bit more careful about what photographs you use. Because not all the photos will just go together. You've got different lighting, different angles and all that kind of thing. So you've got to be a little bit more picky when you're doing actual scenes and using different photos. But fortunately these pups were all photographed from the same angle in the same place with the same lighting on them. So it weren't too bad. So this grass, I basically just made it up. I've painted grass often enough before that I were able to just do it without any kind of a reference. I tend to start with a dark base colour that's going to act as the shadows and what have you between all your bits of foliage and what have you and then gradually work up in tone, not just doing actual grass strokes but just adding other little types of leaves in and what have you, you know, similar to like clovers and what have you, it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. And I might start doing that at a, a tone just a little bit lighter than the base colour and then just gradually working up in tone as I go always leaving some of the work underneath showing through so by the time you get to your highlights you just put in tiny little dabs on here and there and then to finish off I just give it a little bit of an airbrush you know so the edges of it weren't so abrupt you know into background colour just faded the edges off it a little bit and softened it and then all that we're left to do was sign it and then I've got a finished painting and I'll leave you with some close-up shots and footage of the final painting. You can get to have a look at the details a little bit better, especially in that grass. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching, especially if you've watched it all the way through. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!